When it comes to comfort food desserts, bread pudding leads the pack. It's easy to make and it uses up all your leftover bread. So let's make some bread pudding. So we're gonna make a really basic bread pudding here today, but I'm gonna give you options of when you can add other flavors. The most important part of bread pudding, of course, is the bread. We've taken some challah bread here, which is, of course, an egg-based bread. Brioche is also an egg-based bread, really tasty for bread pudding. You'll notice it has a bit of a yellow tone to it, but it's sweet and it's super, super tender. Makes a great bread pudding. Cut the bread open and leave it overnight on a baking sheet on your counter so it dries a little bit. Why? Because stale bread absorbs things better. So when we put our custard on that bread, it's gonna absorb all those great flavors and then give it back to us when we're eating it. So bread is all cubed up and ready to go. Let's start by getting our pan ready. We're gonna butter the pan and grease it so that it comes out easily. Nice little tip, always save your little butter wrappers. Keep them in the freezer for when you need to do something like this. The leftover butter on the wrapper is perfect for actually greasing a dish like this. Okay, so grease dish, bread, let's make that custard. So I'm gonna beat up my eggs here and I'm gonna pour in my milk. And then of course, because this is a dessert, we're gonna add some sugar and sweeten that up. So sugar, eggs, milk. Whisk that together until you can no longer feel the sugar. It's dissolved in that mixture. And now let's add some flavors. So in goes some cinnamon. That's pretty classic in any bread pudding. In goes a little pure vanilla extract. I like to use the pure instead of the artificial. And then we're gonna grate in some fresh nutmeg. I love to grate my nutmeg fresh. You can easily get these in the grocery store and they keep forever. So of course you will always have freshly grated nutmeg, which tastes better than if you buy it pre-ground. Whisk it together well. So you break that egg up and dissolve that sugar. Now let's transfer everything to our greased pan here. This is where if you were gonna add some extra ingredients like raisins, which are kind of traditional, or you could put some berries in here, or even some chocolate chips, cut up some apple, drizzle some maple syrup in, all of these variations are possible and you can make your bread pudding your very own. So you wanna make sure that this pan is almost overflowing with bread. And then we're gonna pour our custard on top. Now, once the custard is all in the bread, we want that bread to absorb that custard so that when it bakes, it bakes evenly. So you're gonna use your hands and you're gonna press that bread down into the mixture. This is when we preheat our oven. We wait this long because this bread needs time to soak up that custard. The preheating time for the oven is just about the right time. So once this has sat for about 20 minutes and your oven has preheated to 350 degrees, pop this in for about an hour. It should smell fantastic in your kitchen and people should be waiting for that bread pudding. So let's take it out and see if it's finished. So to do that, we're gonna take a clean skewer. We're gonna put that into the center of the bread pudding and it should come out clean. If it comes out clean with no messy pudding on there, then you are good to go. So next step is let this cool for just a couple minutes. Cut it into portions, serve it with some fresh fruit, maybe some maple syrup on top, sprinkle some powdered sugar, and make everybody happy. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more of the basics, click over here. If you'd like to see everything I used in this recipe, click over here. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for more basics, put them in the comments section below.